I had been to COP26 in Glasgow in Scotland. One of the key messages which I had been emphasizing and advocating in COP was in terms of rights recognition of indigenous people over land, forest and territories. Mu amar adivasi au forest dwelling communities mankar tankar adhikar jungle jami au tankar jete bhi jaga achi tankar upre tankar adhikar ta recognize ho tar upre mu message ta dei thili au dutiya kotha ta mor eta thila ki jete bhi countries mankar ndcs achi that recognizes the contribution of indigenous people and also recognizes the rights over the land forest and territories and for uh, countries those who have not yet incorporated in their ndcs uh, my uh, i was raising issues in terms of the importance of incorporating it and also for the countries those who have already incorporated the importance of ensuring that it is also implemented on it and the third thing which i was uh, very keenly emphasizing and which is really crucial is to ensure that uh, the traditional knowledge and practices of indigenous communities are being supported and promoted and seen as an integral part of climate action discourse along with uh, respecting their world view and when i contextualize with uh, this with odisha what i realize is i feel odisha is one of a very unique state where we have huge number of different uh, tribal groups and we also have a rich biodiversity and uh, if we see in terms of the communities those who are leading the forest protection uh, practices the way of living eco friendly way of living the adivasis and forest dwelling communities have been leading it so i think it's really really crucial that we emphasize on the rights being recognized over the land forest and territories and also supporting the traditional knowledge and practices when we are talking about odisha the reason it how the community have been conserving and practice and contributing to climate action i think if we see that the community members are being engaged in community led forest protection practices the community members are also uh, in the front lines when it comes to forest fires and dousing the forest fires the community members due to protection of the forest and taking care of the uh, forest they are also ensuring that there is water rejuvenation and restoration so i think it's really crucial to see that how the community members are also engaged in sustainable livelihood how the community members are engaged in uh, biodiversity conservation water conservation and the way of living which is eco friendly and is alternative to plastic pollutions at the same time i think I think it's really, really important for all the youth of Odisha that we try and understand and ensure that we are engaging with uh, indigenous people, Adivasis, and forest dwelling communities. We are reaching out to them. and i think this is one of the very important fact that uh, sometimes we talk about participation of the communities but i think it's really important that we create enabling opportunities where communities are able to participate and that's why i think it's really important to go to them and at the same time it's also very important when we talk about rights recognition because if the rights of the communities are not recognized they are not safe and it's really important for them to be feel safe and secure because they are always in the verge or in the radar of eviction and displacement and land grabbing so in order to protect them it's really important to ensure that the land rights and the forest rights of the communities are recognized and when i say this it's also really important to bring into light the ipcc report which recognizes uh, the rights recognition of the communities over the land forest and territories and also talks about supporting the traditional knowledge and practices so i think in this entire discourse of climate action which i realized in cop 26 the perspective of indigenous people is really really cru- crucial and i was very happy to see a lot of indigenous people who were active from the local communities and indigenous platform of uh, uh, of unfccc and also i would like to emphasize that uh it's us indigenous people adivasis and forest dwelling communities who are most affected by the impacts of climate crisis uh when it is floods when it is cyclones when it is forest fires 
it is us who are affected by the health crisis it is us who are affected uh, by whether food scarcity it is us who are affected uh, by health reasons and other reasons so i think it's really important to ensure that how the sustainable livelihood is sustained and how the conservation practices is sustained and we are enabling it rather than not creating much issues for them the five important things which i would like to say for the young people of odisha that how we can contribute towards climate action and what would i like to say i think the first and the foremost thing it would be really important is to make sharing circles uh um, because the sharing circles would be really important and i i also understand many of the groups have already sharing circles i think one of the things which is really important is to have readings uh, readings of the laws readings of the reports on adivasis and forest dwelling communities readings about the traditional knowledge and practices so i think an desire and an openness to try to understand the world view of indigenous people uh, and forest dwelling communities will be really crucial so this is something one of the thing which is really important to read about it and try and understand about it the second thing which i feel is really important to uh, keep engaging uh, with the adivasis and forest dwelling communities now the fact is like how do we engage with them so i think there are a lot of uh, people's forum uh there are a lot of civil society organization who are working with indigenous people adivasis and forest dwelling communities in odisha so i think it's also really important to have field visits because until and unless you go and interact with the people you do not understand how they are being impacted and how they are contributing so i would also uh, propose that we can have field visit uh, to, uh, to meet with the people interact with the people and the rural areas youth who are already uh, part of the indigenous communities part of the adivasi community so i think it's is needs to be lot more interaction between in the urban youth and the rural youth so there is lots of learning and sharing so i think that is something which is really would be important because again it it is like it's all about perspective like if you are missing out on the perspective of adivasis and forest dwelling communities you are again missing out of a major chunk of the entire discourse so this is the second thing which i would like to uh, emphasize and the third thing <laughs> Uh, which i would also like to uh, say it's it's that for me uh, for us adivasis and forest dwelling communities is uh, nature and forest is a source of identity and it's not a commercial commodity as others see it so i think uh, an understanding of how uh, what development means for us is really important because it's not that we want to be stagnant we also want to grow and we also want to have development but development rooted in our traditional knowledge and practice and, and development which is not evicting us from a land and forest because i think it's really important to understand is development for whom and by whom and for what uh, because at the point of where we see that in the name of development we are evicted from our lands and we are offered compensation but there have been records and field realities that we do not have compensation uh, we have not uh, we do not receive a much of compensation and also if we see if there are given jobs or money again money and jobs are not sustainable but land the relationship of land is always sustainable and it's much more uh, than commodity it's an uh, identity and relationship so i think that understanding of world view would be really important and that is something would be really important for the young people to respect it the young people also to engage in research the young people engaging in writings the young people engaging in different forums to push forward the perspective of the indigenous people in solidarity will be really important the fourth thing which i feel is really important is that if we see adivasis and forest dwelling communities they have lot of articles they have lot of things which they make out which is alternative to plastic pollution which if i say about kholi and dona which is leaf plates uh, which is mats and which is uh, chairs uh, like in mayurbhanj we have sabai grass and we have lot of chairs and tables made out of this so i think it would be really crucial if we go and purchase those alternatives from the community members because that will be a source of earning for them 
So I also have often seen that how the community members make those items, but they do, they do not get the due profit. So I think if we make it a point that we purchase these articles from the community members themselves, it would be really, really enhancing for the source of livelihood. And the fifth point which I would like to say is that it all comes down to action and what actions can we take. It's really important that how we make sure that we are making a choice individually in terms of consumption, individually in terms of our behavior, individually in terms of our, our thought process, in terms of prioritizing the health of nature. But along with individual, it is also more of collective. I think speaking up itself is also a collective action action is what I feel. So I think every voice matters, your voice matters. And I really, really encourage to speak up. And I think when we also ask youth to speak up, it is our responsibility as a society and the world leaders and the government and the civil society and other entities to ensure that there is safe and enabling spaces for young people to speak up. So yes, I would like to say that it's about reflect, uh, speak and act.